Okay, I'm going to go through the code of this little math quiz program that you saw in the previous video. Um, I'm not going to bother running it here since you've already seen it run. Um, but uh, I'll point some things out that are interesting. One thing that was interesting is this randomizer um, here actually does already precede itself. So, I mean, there's, you know, there's no need to go actually do a random seed of some kind on it because these aren't pseudo random numbers that always to generate random numbers by default which is great uh, i don't know who the fuck would ever want to use a random number generator without a random seed um so you know it's good that they have that as part of .NET. um the rest of these are storing variables which i wouldn't have done this this way but you'll see what i'm talking about here in a minute um now here we have the start the quiz function that they define this method of the class, um, you know, which basically goes in and generates random numbers. Um, you know, this is you know basically how the, uh, the random number generator works. You know, so it's generating numbers along these ranges as in one overloaded version or just between 0 and like 51 um, I don't know um, I forgot what they said about it um, hold on you know like this number in the random number generator you know choose a number like I said between you know greater than or equal to 1 and less than 101 so so it'll be from 1 to 100 you know the number it'll choose in that range Whereas the other version of it that you see here in the code, um, you know, this next 51 will choose a number that's less than, you know, between 0 and less than 51, so between 0 and 50. So that's kind of how it works. And apparently, I, I think these things can return floating point numbers too. Um, hold on. I mean, maybe not. I might have been reading something else. Um, about that. It might have been talking about the number box. Probably was. So I don't know if these can return floating points or not. Probably not. But, um, you know, in any event, you know, so again, you know, this is, you know, I would have done this routine differently. In fact, I wouldn't even have this routine here as a subroutine. You'll see that in a second. Um, but at any rate, you know, it's taking the answers which are basically put in these question marks, okay? These labels. Now, I don't know, you know, they're probably just trying to show a way of doing things and programming to people that are new to programming, but again, I would have just assigned these labels right here in this routine. But again, I wouldn't even have this routine because um, they actually put it, um, you know, they put it down here in the um, start button event. So this is the only routine it has plus this little statement. You know, I would have just put the whole routine in there. It is easier for me, you know, if I'm new to a program, you know, it would be easier for me to come here and just double click on the start button, have it take me to the whole subroutine, you know, than to have to say, okay, well it's got this. Well, I guess we can peek the definition and look at it in this little tiny yellow box here. Or, you know, I can go to the definition, um, you know, which isn't that hard, but still, it's just kind of a pain in the butt to do that. Um, I guess I can use the return button to go back to where we started, but, you know, the, the point is, is that I'd still just have the whole routine here. Now, the only time I'd ever do it this way is if we ended up having a whole lot of functions in here, then I would start splitting them up into functions, but otherwise... It's still better for me just to click the button and just go here and see what this fucking routine is. Because this, you know, is telling me, okay, this button starts the routine. Oh, go figure. You know, I could have gathered that just from what the button's called. You know what I mean? So, you know, I wouldn't do it that way, you know, as a programmer. It's easier to read, you know, if I could just click on that button and come here and see what the button does. You know, as opposed to have to go off on a wild goose chase. Uh, but again, if I had several functions in here, and sometimes you need that, I'd probably have a mixture, have some of the code here and some functions that it's called just to split it up, um, you know, that are, you know, uh, 
just to split the code up and it's just going to be like 500 lines long it'd be nice to have it split up into separate functional blocks but otherwise I just generally for this small program I wouldn't have done this but again they're probably just trying to demonstrate the point that you know this is still considered good programming practice but again I wouldn't do it this way um, in this small of a program that just makes it actually harder to read um, it, take, it takes longer to go on a wild goose chase um, so, but at any rate, you know, this routine too. The other problem I have with it is that, you know, they're, they're, you know, these, you know, add in one, add in two, plus left label. Oh well, they are setting the text here. Uh, they actually are setting the text here. But again, um, and that's fine. You know, they're they're actually setting the labels here, which is what I do. The thing is, I wouldn't have these variables. Um, I would simply have a variable with the answer in it. You know, and uh, I might have these as temporary variables, maybe. Um, however, I really wouldn't do that. I mean, I would just simply go plus left text, and again, I would name the damn labels. I name it label plus or label, you know, whatever. Label left, label right, you know, um, or label one left, label one right, whatever. Um, you know, I might be more specific and call it label plus left, label plus right, LBL plus left, LBL plus right. You know, use a Hungarian thing. Uh, notation, but um, this uh, um, you know, but I, I wouldn't, you know, basically do this. I would go, let's see, you know, you still have to do a two string, um, but I still should be able to go randomizer dot next um, dot two string. Let me see if I can do that. Basically, yeah, I can do that. You know, still one of the kind of neat things about .NET is that you can do this sort of, you know, lengthy uh, set of methods to combine them together into one concise uh, statement. But at any rate, you know, these variables would have been unnecessary because you know we're just trying to populate these labels, and that's what this routine essentially does. But I would store the answers is what I would do. I'd have one variable to say, okay, you know, um, well, you know, but ha you know, still I might use temporary variables for it just so that I can say, uh, um, you know, because these are still random numbers. Um, so again, you might at least need temporary variables, but these would just be local, and then I just make a, a you know a member variable that actually has the answer. Okay, so you store the answer in it instead of storing the uh, components of the problem. And so later on when we go to check the answer, you just really have to check it against, you know, what's in the text box versus, you know, uh, what the answer is as opposed to having to perform the calculation when they're checking the answer, which is what they do, and you'll see that in a second. You know, um, and they're you know, setting the control value to zero here. But anyway, that's all this does is really <laughs> generate random numbers and store it in these unnecessary member variables and, um, you know, and populate the, uh, you know, the labels, you know, with the uh, uh, text. And then it starts the timer. Okay. So, um, and down here we get to check the answer, and this is where they check the answer. And so they got to perform all these calculations. And again, I would have just <laughs> done this in one statement because that's in the timer event that uh, uh, this is checked. I mean, there's no real reason to have this as a separate function, you know, because every time you have a separate function, that's a function call, unless the compiler knows to combine it. Um, but otherwise, if this gets set up, you know, and compiled in the final release as an actual independent function, then you know, um, that's going to be a slower program because these function calls do take time. So even though a program like this, it doesn't really matter, I just consider it bad practice to have an unnecessary amount of function calls. Um, you know, if your program was doing this 100,000 times a second, that would add up having to do function calls as opposed to just having it all done locally. 
so it'll make the program run slower. So if you're doing something like graphics or even just running a big calculation, you know that you know that could take extra time and you know that's extra minutes or even hours that it may add up to, depending on what it is you're calculating. If uh, you're making a renderer or something, well, yeah, I mean that could be a significant uh, time loss or making a video game or what have you. Anyway, um, and we got the start button. We've already discussed that. And the timer one tick event. You know, this is uh, um, you know, again, it's having to run this check the answers every time. Again, you know, why not just do that check here? And better yet, why not you know do it with the answers instead of having to run these calculations every time? Because then you're just doing a simple variable comparison as opposed to having to calculate all these things, particularly with multiplications and divisions and so forth. So, I, I mean, that would just be an easier comparison, a smaller statement to read, etc. So, that's how I would have done that. But again, they're probably just trying to demonstrate programming practices, I'm sure, because a lot of the times, you know, you might want to do things this way if you had much more complex programs. But um, still, on this program, I wouldn't have done it this way. Um, check the answer, okay, timer stop, and then, you know, hey, the answer's right, you know, if it works, else, if time is greater than zero, you know, so it checks the answer just once every second, you know, so it's not that big of a deal, but, again, I still would have done this differently, because uh, it would have been just easier to read, <laughs> you know, frankly. Um, say time left, I mean, it's not like this is that complex of a program, but still, I mean, it's just yeah, it's just better practice, I think, to consolidate everything for the reasons I've discussed in this video. Um, anyway, here's where it decrements the timer, um, or the time left variable, um, and displays the results. Concatenates this here, um, and our label there. This right here is set up as a label, by the way, so just a fancy uh, uh, on the event. You know, it's had set up kind of in a fancy way here. Um, but uh, let's see. Okay, and then here again, you know, they're running that calculation, you know, if you uh, if your time runs out, they're setting the answers, um, you know, in there to the problems, but again, that should have been already pre-calculated. Um, and then we've already discussed this in the previous video, you know, this being a good, you know, you know takes care of the selection set, um, you know, using this event, so... Anyway, that pretty much kind of covers it. So.